hello stitchers hope you're all well so we're going to make some Easter or springtime bunting I'm going to do a different little technique on each um, pendant pennant um, first up we're going to do a little bunny an Easter bunny and on if you go to the website you can find this printout in the freebies section and you'll want a um, to make a template for your, uh, your pennant. You don't have to do it this size, you can do whatever size you want. But mine's about five and a half inches, 14 centimeters by seven and a quarter inches or 18.5 centimeters. So I've cut out a few of those. You'll probably, you'll want five in total unless you want to make more or less but I'm going for a five and then you've got a little bunny outline that I've put out again so as I say they're on the website and they're freebies in fact all of the p patterns that I'm going to do in this series are on the website as freebies so you might want to head over there and download them all but that said you can freehand draw so um, I've got some linen tablecloths that have been cut up that I cut up um, and I'm going to use these this one a piece of it for my bunny and I'm going to do an applique onto this I've only done one uh, one triangle one one um, thickness you can do more you can you can put them together you can do it but obviously for this purpose I'm not doing a backing at this moment in time that you can do yourself once you've uh, finished your stitching so I'm gonna go there I think and I will I think I'll draw around it oops uh, I'm just going to give it a bit of a hem simple because I'm I don't know whether I'm doing a turn applique or I might do a raw edge I'm just going to cut out a, a basic shape for now And I always say you don't have to be great at embroidery. Um, if you find something with embroidery on it, use it. Oh, I can't use them because I can't seem to get around the corner with them. That's better. <laughs> so been trying to get some gardening done uh, but it keeps raining here so it's not really very great I was absolutely soaked yesterday and covered in mud so I gave it up as a bad job in the end but my front driveway and garden bit at the front tile it is literally all um, cottage garden plants and they just need sorting out and dividing to make them a bit more get a bit more strength into them I think they've sort of gone a bit straggly and over the last couple of years right I will save that I will use that for something else but I was looking at that and thought, oh, that might go in this here, but hey ho. And the lace edging, the, the trim, I would definitely be using that at some point. So, so if I want to do a needle turned applique, which is exactly what it says on the tin, you turn it with your needle when you're stitching. I was going to find a needle that I'm hoping you can see. You sort of use the needle to stitch and then stitch on. I, def I definitely need a hem 
which I am going to do. So I'm going to use a um, glue stick which I put down. Oh my gosh, if you could see my desk, I'm glad you can't. It's an absolute tip. There it is. There you are. It's an absolute tip this morning. So we can have those fancy blue uh, pen things from wherever. I've, and I have got them. But I tend to use glue stick because it's cheaper. And just put a bit on. Do, do, do. Don't go mad with it. You just want enough to just secure it slightly. And sometimes those um, little pen things are better for it. Um, I'm just going to say something about the the needle turn applique. I'm sort of doing a what would we call it? A mosh up, a mash up between needle turn applique and English paper piecing. Only because this this is a little bit uh, fancy on the on the pattern. So yeah, I know people are going to shout at me and say you're not doing needle turn applique, you're doing paper piecing. Well, I am in a in a roundabout way. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you an easy way. That was that that's my point. I'm just going to show you an easy kind of quick fix because guaranteed to go around corners by the way you want to be snipping because you'll get a lot of fabric if you don't you, you're not be able to twist your fabric turn your fabric And this is quite tough where it's got been embroidered already. Just go around, snip in, down to there. Try not to get too close in. But yeah, I do know, you know, I'm sort of teaching you, I'm telling you the wrong, right, wrong, right, wrong. But. If you're new, don't let it bother you. <laughs> Did I put some glue on that? Because it don't seem to want to stick itself down. It's a bit like... Um, all things you know there's rights and wrong ways to do everything and this just makes life a little bit easier for me and what I'm going to do is I'm going to really really press down I'm just going to put this over there oh cute really press down onto the edges you can get the iron out if you want, I am not. Really press and put a crease in. I think you'll see why when I show you. I can already hear it now. People are shouting at me at the, at the screen saying that's not how you do it. But I know, but this is such a a little bit twisty and turny right okay so I've I will cut snip that down oh, will I I don't need to don't know why I'm, I might do when it comes off here so I feel like I've really made a crease on that and now here's the thing I'm gonna take it off take it out Okay. Let's 
see what I mean? I'm doing a bit of a mashup. And you've got a, a lovely hem that you don't need to worry about. You can, the other way is, draw on, draw around onto there, pop your, pop your th uh, fabric on and turn as you go, but I find this easier. Just makes my life or life a little bit better, easier, quicker, whatever. Just coming around, and I'm going to pin on. So I'm pinning on around about there. You probably can't see the creases really well, but when you do your own, you'll be able to see them. Just put you on there. Okay. And you will want some pins, some applique pins or applique. Um, I know there's great debate on how you say it. I mean, it's a French word and they pronounce it applique. So, I'm probably saying it, well, I am definitely saying it wrong, but it's how I was taught and I'm just, I just can't get it out of my head now. <laughs> right, okie dokie. So, just an ordinary machine thread will do. In your little needle. Um... And I just use a single strand. I know you're not going to be able to see this too greatly. Uh, oh, will I do a single strand? Mm, yeah, I might do a double. Just for... No, it's all right. I'm not in. And what I'll do is I will come up through the back. I'm hoping you can see me come up through the back and take a little tiny stitch oh for some reason I can't and then I'll sort of go along taking a piece a little bit of fabric from the back back in and a little bit of fabric stitch on the applique on the patch just pull as you go And I'm going to do that all the way around. And yes, it's a bit of a, like I say, it's a bit of a mashup of English paper piecing and applique, but I find when I'm doing a complicated, which this is not really complicated, but when I'm doing a more complicated shape, it's easier to leave the. Um, do it on a piece of card just from experience that's all and you sort of turn your fabric in with your needle and I've got a bit of a point going on there where it's not quite tucked in there we go and that's why it's called needle needle turned so you're turning a hem with your needle as you go around. But I'm obviously using my fingertips because that is a, a strange shape there going on. Come on. You can manipulate easily with a needle, manipulate the shape. Sometimes I think it's a little bit frustrating. Just, this is going to be the, I might just snip it down a little bit more. Just so I get them all. 
more defined sort of ear piece. There we go. And the smaller your stitches, obviously, you're not going to see them. If you want to see your stitches, go ahead and do a bigger stitch in a different colour. Um, or blanket stitch or something like that. That's entirely up to you. Sit you down. I'm just, just going to snip that up. This is what I do along. I sort of go along and think, oh, because that was a longer hem. It's sticking out a bit. So just give yourself. Give yourself a little bit of uh, leeway, don't worry. Don't worry if the shape's not perfect. I mean, there's going to be people out there that are expert needle turn appliqueers, of which I am not one. And that's why I like to come on and show you bits and bobs that I do. I think we all sort of have our own area of, what do we say, I wouldn't say expertise, I would say of things we prefer to do. And while I do love applique, it's not the first thing I've come to do. But on slow stitch, you do tend to do an awful lot of applique because you're sewing things on onto fab other fabrics. So if you're sort of adding a patch, you could argue that that's applique because you're applying a patch. I'm coming around my little ear. Do you know, I never, I never really get messages. And then as soon as I start to film, guaranteed I get lots and lots of, I can hear my phone pinging away. And it's when you're in these uh, WhatsApp groups and people, it's a Sunday morning here. And obviously it's one of those I'm, people are off work, they're just having a little catch up on everything, so they're pinging away in WhatsApp to tell you what's going on, or what they've been up to, or whatever, which is nice, but if you're in a few, oh dear, it gets uh, quite a busy, like I say, it's a Sunday morning thing. Or Sunday evening when people are getting ready to go back to work on the Monday. Oh, hello, Gertrude. No, come on, out of the way. If you're new to the channel, uh, this is Gertrude, my cat. And guaranteed, the moment to start filming, she wants in on the action. So just pretend she's not there. She's sitting on my arm. Hello. Oh, got a waft of tail in my face. Hello, I know. I might have to have my 
thimble actually because going through that bit just take that out don't bite me she can be a little madam and if you don't stroke her she wants she tends to give you a swipe or a little nip going round that's good I want to put my tail I'm not going to worry too much about the tail because I've got a something I want to put on for the tail I feel like I might be um, boring while you're stitching watching me stitch but it is a I have been told that it's okay keep stitching don't uh, worry So, oh, once I'm all the way around, the fun will do a bit of uh, something else on it. I'm just going to try and tuck that back under because it's gone back. Now you can press this. The other way to do this is with a bonder web or heat and bond and just sew it on stick cut it out stick it on I mean and there's no stitching involved whatsoever but I didn't want to get the iron out <laughs> oh dear because I just couldn't be bothered I don't like ironing in fact the only time I iron is when I'm doing something like this sewing and it needs a, it requires an iron she's eating her dinner and I explain this every time don't I that she has to have a food up here because uh, Reggie the dog, we've got a little doggy, a little border terrier toy poodle cross Reggie is, and you've probably seen him anyway. But he's a greedy cuss and he needs her food if I leave it down. And it's not good for him because cat food is higher in protein apparently. She's back. Hello. Turn that over. Be um, because we've had such a lot of rain here in the UK, my garden was so much easier to dig over. Because sometimes it's like rock hard concrete because there's lots of roots in it as well from the over the years of the perennials being there I've sort of, we've got a, a hedge at the front a hawthorn hedge which just looks awful in the winter and it's all it's got lots of spikes on it and we I hate to cut it because hold on I just need to make sure I'm going hate to cut it because it's uh, it's got so many spines on it and they get stuck in your shoes so I'm sort of it was tr harshly trimmed back 
um, at the back end of last year, last sort of August, uh, September, August time, uh, because I was having a fence put in, a little picket fence put in, and it was en encroaching so much onto the path, it had to be cut right back at, on one side. So that made it look even worse. Um, and now it just looks well bedraggled. So what we've decided to do, or what I've decided to do, is uh, replace each one with a with an evergreen. Still have the hedge, but replace each one with an evergreen and take out the the existing hawthorn hedge which is a shame because it's well established but it's just such a scrappy hedge it just doesn't look nice so i've had been gathering um evergreens but have not gone for one particular specimen species i've gone for several different because of the eco dyeing I like to do. Oh, that's not looking very good, is it? There. I might have to. Oh, it'll be fine. Uh, because of the eco dyeing I like to do, I just want to have um, available to me lots of different leaves. And especially if they're evergreen, I can do use them over the winter as well. So. That's what I've been doing. I've been well. Um, I've managed to get. Um, oh, I didn't want to go through. Get a couple of them out already, but it's a hard job because of the root system. It's so well established. It's been there forever, years and years and years. Well, I've lived here. Um, and 18, 19 years and it's we've always had it and it was well established when we moved in so it's time it's time and I don't feel like it'll be safer for the little birds and what have you that are in it because the nests won't be seen in the winter months. I have noticed that people try and take the nests out. So it comes Reggie. Hello. Myself. Ouch. Hello, you. I hear him t tapping around. There's a lot of thread there, and it doesn't want to go through. Come on. Sometimes that's better. Sometimes it's uh, a nuisance to oh, especially when you've got extra thread. You try to turn it un under. There we go. We're all right. So yes, the hedge is uh, coming along or it's coming out. But um. I live on the main road route through the village and I don't want to be exposed to too much um, while it's growing so I'm trying to sort of to 
buy really, really big plants is so expensive. So I've been buying them that are looking a little bit sad and a little bit forlorn where they've not been watered properly and I've I've revived them over the last few months. So they're a bit little bit bigger. But they will grow quite quickly. I can't think what the um do you know my brain's gone completely empty of what I've bought. Laurel being one, a spotted laurel. And I know they get quite big, but my thought processes I will sort of train it to the size I want and then try and keep it down as much as I can right I'm round the end right to that end uh, where are we I'm just gonna go backwards and forwards a little bit and just lock my stitches in Wonderful. Snip that off. Put me away. I don't think I need you now. Get rid of you. Oh, that's sweet. That's sweet. And I thought I've got a little Yorkshire buttons. And I either do that colour or that one. And I'm going to stitch that on. I'll use this. Oh, my tummy rumbling. It's thinking you had tea and toast a long time ago, Rachel. It might be time for some lunch. We're having a nice roast lunch here today. Yorkshire puddings. Um, a roast chicken. Some stuffing. And all the rest of the nice trimmings. Um, parsnips and roast potatoes and veg some nice I've still got some purple sprouting broccoli in the garden and I've still got some cavolo nero so I will try and get some of that Oop. I'll snip off because it's a cut and come again I got the idea of using Cavallo Nero in my um, borders as plant, as like a foliage plant. Uh, from I went on a visit to a, I don't know, a chateau uh, when I went to France last time, last summer, and they'd got Cavallo Nero in, and it was plumes, and it was so beautiful. I thought, do you know, I'm doing that. It wasn't last time, it was a year before. Uh, so I, I had a little go at that and it did look nice, but it starts to grow tall at, at this end of the year because it uh, has like a central stem and then your leaves come off and they start to get quite leggy, but you know, it's uh, it looks okay. I don't mind. It is beautiful. Right, you, I think, let's have a little look. Do we need to put anything else on it? I don't think we do. I think that that is done. And hopefully, yeah, that's done. I'm not doing any more. I don't need to put any, I don't need to put any, um, embroidery on I mean let's have a look you could have put an ordinary button on for his little tail or make a little tiny pom-pom but if you want to make a Yorkshire button there's a video on how to do that on the YouTube channel so do go and have a little look at that that's uh, they are quite simple to make um, so happy stitching everyone and I hope you liked this video and if you did please give it a thumbs up and if you want to see more um, do subscribe and if you pop anything in the comments I do try to uh, reply 
quite quickly but obviously i don't always get the time and i don't always see uh, gertrude <laughs> i don't always see them straight away so you know i i am i, I do come around and uh, have a look most of the time but happy stitching and i'll see you all again soon